Hey, my name is Gibran, and this is how I started my own genetic engineering lab from home. Lately, I've just been really bored at home with the pandemic and lockdowns and COVID-19. So I thought of starting something new at home, like gardening, baking, knitting, but eh, there's something better that I could do. So I thought, what if I could start my own genetic engineering lab at home? And that's exactly what I did. So I went online and found this website called the Odin. I went ahead and bought their DIY CRISPR kit. And a few weeks later, it arrived at my house. That's where it all started. The point of the experiment is to create a gene edit in bacteria, specifically edit their genes in such a way that they gain antibiotic resistance to a specific antibiotic known as streptomycin. So you're probably asking yourselves, where the f do we start? Well, I'll show you how. So first I had to make some petri dishes to actually grow the bacteria on. And right now you can see me here mixing some Luria broth powder with water. And this will eventually be the food for our bacteria while they're you know sitting in my fridge. Now, most people will just go ahead and screw the cap on tight, but this is not what you're supposed to be doing. Instead, you just place it on top of the bottle like this. Next, I had to cook the agar solution in my microwave. And while microwaving, I had to see if it started boiling or not. And as I kept repeating this process over and over again, the solution started getting more and more transparent. And when I could see no more solids inside the solution, I knew it was done. I then poured the solution in some empty plates and let them sit overnight in my fridge. I used some distilled water to suspend some freeze-dried bacteria and I stroked this tube across my rack to mix it well. Then I pipetted some bacteria from the tube and inserted them onto the plates I had prepared last night. I took my inoculation loop and spread the bacteria around in the plate. I left these plates in my room for about a week and this was what I found. And now it was time to prepare some competent bacterial cells. These are cells that are able to take in foreign DNA. To achieve this, I added some polyethylene glycol and calcium chloride to an empty micro centrifuge tube. I then scooped up some bacteria I had from the plate before and added it to the tube. It was a little bit tough to get the bacteria off the actual inoculation loop, but I got there in the end. Now, I had to add some plasmids to the solution, and plasmids are these circular pieces of DNA that are naturally found within most microorganisms. The first piece of DNA is a plasmid containing the actual CRISPR-Cas9 genes. The second one is also a plasmid, but containing the guide RNA sequence and corresponding genes with that. The third piece of DNA is something called template DNA. This is the strand of DNA that I hope to insert into the bacteria's genome. It will give it resistance to the antibiotic streptomycin. I then left this mixture in my fridge for about 30 minutes. After that, I immediately dunk the tube in some very warm water. This caused the bacteria to undergo a heat shock, which increases the chances of allowing the DNA to flow into the bacteria. Next, I added some Luria broth to the mixture, which gave the bacteria a source of nutrients to temporarily grow on. After letting the entire mixture sit for about an hour, I pipetted the solution onto a Petri plate containing antibiotics. After a few days, this was how the plate looked like. And after a few weeks, it became even more crowded. So in the end, the experiment was a success. I had managed to make a gene edit in the bacteria and allow them to survive on a plate that would normally kill them. Now, 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 before we start talking about all the wonderful applications of this technology, there are some things that we need to talk about. This technology can be used for a good reason and a bad reason. While it opens the door for someone to create something out of evil desire, 
it opens the doorway for innovative ideas, creative thinking, and groundbreaking discoveries. Personally, I see more pros than cons with giving this technology out to the public. And I believe that it's initiatives like this that will pave the path of innovation forward, allowing us to live in a world with less disease, a better environment, and an overall happier life.